Hey, welcome to the final lecture about atomic absorption and atomic emission spectroscopy. And in this video, we are just going to compare the different methods that we have uh, looked through now in the different uh, videos. And you might be wondering how to orient yourself in this jungle of different methods. You have both atomic absorption, you have atomic emission, uh, you have also different atomizations for both of these um, techniques. So how to choose what, what to use. And uh, of course, like with choice of any method, there are multiple, multiple different criteria that need to be taken into account. Starting with, uh, is this actually suitable for the purpose? So is the concentration range that you are interested in being detectable? Uh, but also more convenience uh, properties are, are important. Is that uh, method applicable money-wise? Does it pay off to make the investment into the instrumentation that you need? Uh, how fast is that? And other questions like this. Um, but here we have a possibility to compare uh, the detection limits that can be achieved with the, uh, some of the atomic spectroscopy methods. So we have here a comparison of the atomic absorption with flame or atomic absor absorption with electrothermal, so graphite burners. Uh, and we also have flame emission and ICP em emission, as well as ICP coupled to a mass spectrometer. And mass spectrometers you will have later in this course. So we are not going to dig very much deep, deeper into the ICP and mass part here. Uh, so firstly, uh, you will see here that different elements, different uh, metals are being, can be analyzed with different uh, uh, techniques to achieve the best uh, sensitivity. Maybe when we generically look at, then we see that generally uh, the electrothermal atomic absorption, so with the graphite burners, uh, gives us the lowest detection limits. So that means that if we are after very low detection limits, we should usually uh, prefer electrothermal atomic absorption to the flame at atomic absorption. But as mentioned also in the previous video, uh, atomic uh, absorption with graphite burners has other shortcomings. So sometimes for simplicity and for better reproducibility, um, flame atomic absorption is still preferentially used. Another thing that we see here is uh, that some elements, especially alkali metals such as sodium, as well as potassium, but also calcium, have actually lowest dete lower detection limits with the flame emission um, uh, instrumentation compared to the atomic absorption instrumentation. And this comes from the fact that these are easily ionizable elements, which means that already at lower temperatures, they are being uh, to very efficient rate converted to the um, excited states in our flames and therefore also nice detection limits can be achieved with a very simple flame emission techniques. So for these elements actually when the concentrations that we want to detect are not super low, uh, then the simple with flame atomic emission can be used very efficiently. When we now go to ICPMS, uh, ICP emission spectroscopy, then we see that depending on the element, the detection limits are much lower than they were for the flame emission, and they can also be much lower than they and then were seen for the um, atomic absorption with the graphite burners. So um, ICP emission spectroscopy, of course, gives even better sensitivity for most of the elements, not all elements, but most elements. Uh, however, with the problem with ICP emission spectroscopy is an extremely high investment costs, as well as uh, very, very high maintenance cost of the instrumentation. So this technique is applied when we need very low detection limits, uh, but the requirement here for this instrumentation to actually pay off 
is to have very many samples on daily basis to be analyzed. So for real, um, for real laboratories that that main focus is on elemental analysis, atomic emission spectroscopy with ICT is a good choice. A similarly low or even sometimes even lower detection limits can also be achieved with ICTMS. However, similar drawbacks as to ICT uh, atomic emission spectroscopy apply here. Uh, so from this conclusively, we can say that if possible, choose the simplest instrumentation. For example, if you have relatively high concentrations of sodium or potassium to be determined, flame emission spectroscopy does the job. Um, the next best choice uh, would be to use a flame absorption um, instrumentation. However, if detection limits become critical, we should move to the electrothermal or ICT emission spectroscopy, uh, taking into account also the measurement times for electrothermal absorption instrument, as well as uh, the costs that are elevated for ICT instrumentation. 